Okay, the SF has gone as well as Doom. Uh, I think that's exactly the same three as we saw in the game against uh, EG for OG. OG has played the most games in this tournament, giving the, the run through the, the lower bracket and just having played a series up against EG, they've had to give away a lot of information that Poppy has been picking up on and I think, you know, there's a lot... Great slot up here. There's a lot to take from how PBD drafted against him, and he can take all the all the strengths that PBD showed in the in the draft and and use that to his advantage against OG. Because I really feel like EG, it was their play that decided the game much more so than their draft or their lack of good play. Well, at least OG picked up a bit of information. Don't give Eternal Envy Envy Spirit. They ban won't ban that one away alongside the Doom. They'll pick up the Winter Wyvern against the Slardar, and there's the toss. There's the three heroes we mentioned. So now there's still two really good supports for Secret if they want to go for the Dazzle or the Bane. I think if, if not, UG will likely get it, get one in the second phase or Bane it out. I prefer seeing the Bane just because I think I still think overall it's it's a much better hero than the Dazzle is. Statistically, even more so. The Dazzle, it's good. It also depends on what Poppy has in mind for the actual strategy. I just feel like whenever we see them play the Bane, it's almost a guaranteed win. Which is easy to say about a team that's in, coming from the winner bracket, of course. Doesn't Dazzle open up more strategy to them, though? Okay. I guess so. So the highlight die tiny. So they're on Radiant, which is pretty important when having the potential support tiny from highlight day. Does it work on Dire? Uh, I was talking I don't about think it. I it think does. It, it might be potentially possible, but it's going to be much harder on Dire's okay. side, even if it is. I think so. you have to like eat a tree and then you can do it. <laughs> yeah, it'd be some weird scenario. <laughs> but yes, Radiant side, Tiny. Team Circa going back to this strategy once again. It seems like none of the other teams. I expected um, the first time that they revealed this support Tiny that it was going to be shut out a little bit better. Perhaps the enemy team would go for a five-man excursion, you know, block out that hard camp, preventing the pull. You know, there is the chance that it's not it's a, a mid time. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I like the combination with Tiny and Slaughter too, because sometimes Misery doesn't get anything out of the off lane, and instead they just throw the Slaughter onto the mid laner, especially if it's a weak hero like the SF. So OG have to be careful about their mid choice. Team Secret, I think, um, banning away the team fight heroes, so obviously the end dying, which goes well with the Tusk, but I would look towards... I don't know, how do you feel about Gyrocopter? It works well with the OG lineup, but you already have the Slardar on the side of Team Secret, which I think is... Um, and, and right now, OG has a lot of confidence in, in the Gyrocopter as well, right? They just come off two wins with it, mm -hmm. is in combination with the Tusk, so it makes a lot of sense for them to go, go that direction. But if Wind Ranger's left in the pool, Team Secret could just pick up a Weeha Wind Ranger, have that combined with the Slardar, and I think that's a completely antagonistic uh, scenario for a Gyrocopter. I don't think you ever want to be in a game like that. Team hmm. Not entirely sure why. If he bans out another support, such as the Shadow Priest, for instance, I'm not completely on board with that just because OG, from what we've just seen, Played the Winter Wyvern and the Tusk as their supports, and they're more likely to, with this current pool, pick up a Earthshaker or a Darkseer for, for Moon Meander. So, so the need to ban out the, the additional supports for Secret isn't really there compared to banning out potential cheese. See, this is what like banning out the Alchemist, banning out Miracle Heroes. So, do you think they should have not banned the Undying? I don't think it was necessary. <laughs> Probably just precautionary in, in, in case. We... Okay. So Tiny, it is a moon yeah. Pick up the dazzle. It is a moon me and the tusk. Mm. So I think we still have that wind ranger open. The dazzle was a smart pickup for OG because you have this kind of, at least in the first one, two burst oriented. I mean, the support Tiny or perhaps core Tiny is very much focused on his combination. If he doesn't get that kill, there's the turnaround that happens. Dazzle is a great response to that. Guys, there's a there's a hospital. The AA is banned. There's a Hosker in the pool. Does Secret think they can leave the Wind Ranger until late? Pick it up? I don't know if they want to pick it up right do now. They have, do they even want to pick it up? There's like no, no clues as to what OG want to want to go yet, because you don't know they're mid lane. You don't know if they're going to pick a Huskar yet. I, maybe... Are you even scared of a Huskar pick, though? 
You can still pick up two physical damage cores. I think OG would be fine. Like a third pick. You can still pick up a brood too. Yeah. You could go brood. You could go like Wind Ranger Sven as your mid and your safe lane to give yourself a big up in physical damage. Hmm. The brood is uh, dangerous against OG right now. Yeah, I, well, I, I, the, three, the three strange picks of cheese picks that they've had are all still available right now. Meepo is not banned, Brood's not banned, Husko's not banned. It's going to give uh, Secret a little bit of a headache, but I would assume that they've got a plan for that. Well, either team plays Meepo. Yep. Also true. I'd like to see both teams play at once. I was going to say, I, I would too. I mean, you've got to factor in the best of five. If this goes all the way, we, we're going to see at least one. I wonder what secret are digging into their, their reserve time for. Hmm. They must be discussing the husk right now, right? The husk now. Yeah, I mean, they can't take it themselves, though. So uh, do they have to pick up something that's already good versus husk bar? Shadow Shaman, I think they might go in the direction of a push strategy in case they pick up the Hoska. Imagine following up with the legendary chill of Poppy and then potentially, you know, a Brood or a Dragonite. We have seen a Puppy Chen here this week, in fact. Mm. OG don't have bad spam against a push lineup with the uh, Winter Wyvern Splinter Blast, the Ice Shards. They continue down that line, get like the Wind Ranger. I think they would still be okay versus a push, but Shadow Shaman's definitely been seeing an increase in priority. It used to be the Lion that was favored as sort of like the fifth pick support. It's good for removing single creep waves, but when they come in with heroes that can, like, for instance, with Gen Creeps and Rasta Wards, it gets a lot more difficult. High ground would be heavy commitment, though. If yeah. you don't have a creep wave and you throw down Serpent Wards and your heroes on the front line as well, You've got uh, Tosca special, I think, is quite good in those scenarios where a team has to make commitment to a Rax, and then there's no retreat from the ice shards that blocks them out. Yeah, exactly. What Tosca's really good at is capturing that one frontline hero when, the, when you go high ground, mm -hmm. pick him off as a straggler and shut out his team with the ice shards. I mean, even then, I think this lineup is very potent for skirmishes, too. Like, the amplified damage combined with Shadow Shaman Wards is already really good. Shadow Shaman, I think, has... Good, very good disables versus the Tusk. Oh yeah, definitely. They've got great Roche taking potential already, without I, seeing any of their other cores. I like this a lot more, like the Husk Club was probably... They probably thought a lot about it, but I, I this is know. the safer choice, I feel. I think it's safer than Huskar, but I still think it's... I don't know, is, is Phantom Lancer particularly good versus heroes? Like, they can just run a core tiny, if he gets Ags, he can deal with the Phantom Lancer fairly easily, the Shadow Shaman can push down towers very early on, they don't have the Darkseer to enhance his mobility, enhance his damage. Of the carries we've seen no play, I think it's one of the better ones. I think the Gyrocopter was too susceptible to just be torn apart by Amplified Damage, Tiny Blink and Initiate, and all the disciples. I mean, that's the what shadow. they have Grave and Snowball and Cold Embrace for, right? I think they can pick a hero that actually has less escape because of that. But this also means, uh, we talked about it early on in the draft, they can still run a Carry Tiny, right? Yeah. And Carry Tiny is actually quite good versus Phantom Lancer. This gives mm -hmm. more incentive, right, rather than the Support Tiny, who wouldn't be able to pick up his Blink Dagger fast enough, would be far enough behind in farm, his physical damage wouldn't really threaten the PL. Do we look now for a Pylai Die support hero? A Bounty Hunter, maybe? The Meepo Pan? I think a Bounty Hunter would really put Team Secret ahead in, in terms of fighting, and these are two teams who, who love to fight. Hmm. We are Wind Ranger. And out by his own team. So the Wind Ranger ban. I think Alina could be uh, could be decent here. Immediately taking out a hero of Team Secret. The front line is sort of lackluster like though. Yeah, they pretty much have the Tusk and then the response from their two defensive heroes. So Red Eye, a big tempo controller. Red Eye likes the Invoker. Well, there are only two. We picks that have been played already in Frankfurt that are currently open, and one of them is an Invoke, and the other one is the Magnus. You know, a miracle 
in Volker wouldn't be bad here, actually. I like it. Because <laughs> you're talking about Sardar and Tiny, full strength heroes, low on mana pool. If you go with Klaus Wex in Volker, you can destroy. Ooh. And Anti Mage will finish us off then for draft number one of the grand final at the Frankfurt Major. OG versus Team Secret. And what a grand final we have got. OG, the team, to try and achieve what has never been done in the history of Dota. The ability to come through all the way through the lower bracket. They already have by reaching this grand final. And if they can win it all, that's going to be a very tough ask for anyone. Even CDEC couldn't achieve that after they came through the wild card at TI. But up against Secret. While they might have come second over in New York, you'll be seeing oh, the winning really in suddenly. Nanyang. You'll also <laughs> be seeing uh, winning everywhere else. Team Secret, they are a huge favorite coming into this, but can the underdogs win? Can OG Dota bring down the Titans? I definitely think they've shown so many good games now. I personally placed OG top eight. They've surprised me time and time again. I've considered them the underdogs in their last three matchups. They've come through every single time. Prepare for this is a best of five. It's a different type of series, of course. So, uh, it is. who does that really favor? It's difficult to say right now. Well, let's oh. get it underway. Team Secret versus OG, your grand final live here in Frankfurt. The first ever major who will be crowned the champion. And who will nice have to Danish all chat. I like it. <laughs> <laughs> the Danish spirit is definitely alive. Of course, Canada is the real winner, no matter what happens. <laughs> We have Danes on both teams, so that's that's good too. Of course, Misery did say good luck, friends, in all chat. Oh, no, not is, friends right now, I think. Is Doesn't this going like to start it. already? OG bring all five players down into the Radiant Jungle, and they'll read the crush on Moon. The pause behind Moon. He has to protect himself inside that snowball. Eternal Envy dropping very, very low. Will he die with a toss up? Envy's down. Beale gets to cover a huge grab from Misery. Misery's trying to get out with Pylon. Die. OG, there's so much damage being applied to Team Secret. A double kill for No Tell. They want to go for more. Pylon I die, throwing no tail away, but he'll just switch his target over to Puppy, who pushed Crit into a corner with the shot. Puppy will grab a double kill. The team secret. We're heating up here in Grand Final Game 1. May not be over just yet. We have Blue's coming off cooldown. No tail, not a lot left. And now give him maneuverability with a toss forward. Blink still available. No tail's dropping low. The runes are only now just going to spawn. But no tail, the attack we have missed uphill once. Can he actually miss it a second time? No tail, salving up. Up into the secret shot. The attack from We have will he's Cancel the salve. So now they'll back it out. The bounty rune will be given over to Weeha. This will give him his level two and five kills before the cockerel crows. <laughs> Welcome to the finals. <laughs> Incredible level 1 fight. That looks so good for OG because they got an a fantastic Shadow Wave out from Fly. If that doesn't do that much damage and healing at the same time, OG get run over in that fight. But still, they get first blood, they trade 3 for 2. It's a pretty even exchange overall. And we're off to a really interesting laning stage here where OG, of course, they're looking to prevent Pylai Dai from doing this mid pull with the Tiny. And they're committing so hard. Pylai yep. is fairly low and they can see him. That Observer Ward. He's around the tree line now. Pylai Dai has no idea the flying crit awaiting on the other side of the tree line. And crit, he does have, he actually has Arctic Burn waiting, but they're waiting for Pylai to move in and do the toss. The second they do that, Pylai Dai's position is committed too hard, and now there it is. They waited so long, the toss will come, actually pushing the heal away, but Wyvern finds the kill and levels the board up at three apiece. Puppy was rotating over from the side, and Triple Ice just moved back past the tier one tower. But OG really making a big effort to control this secret jungle early on. Yeah, they need to make sure Miracle gets off to a good start in the mid lane. If this just becomes a, I, I'm guessing, kind of a one and a half on one with Tiny tossing, Envy's actually going to have an all right time with the Anti Mage. But like this, with Wyvern even helping out, he has a very difficult matchup. And he's running out of region already. He's got two tangos remaining. He's sending out a salve and, of course, his poor man's shield now on the courier. So far, so good for OG as far as the mid lane goes. This this move from Pilot Eye is not going to work while Crit is here. Again, he moves around with it, but again, with the Terminal Envy rotating over, Crit is in real trouble. That burn, not enough. Envy still able to reach him, even with the blink a little askew. They're able to reach the Wyvern, and Eternal Envy claims his first kill of this game. Illusion. Big for him. This is not something I would have expected to happen around this mid lane already. Eternal Envy getting the kill with the poor man's shield in the region, and of course, the fact that he now grabbed this kill and is leading on CS. He's feeling confident here, just blinking up on Miracle, willing to exchange his salve for a little bit of damage here. Well, no, the Miracle doesn't. He hasn't gone for the Exor build. He's gone more for the Quas 
And to offset this, he's picked up the Blaze of Attack before he picks up his boots up against the Anti-Mage. But he's, he's playing the harassment game right now. He does have way superior region, 7.2 before even using a Tango. We'll try to just drain Envy of resources in this mid lane. Curious to see what route Envy oh. takes if he tries for a bottle even in this oh. mid lane. Cold Snap's being used. Eternal Envy does have Blink on cooldown. But Crit doesn't have some extra damage without the Creep Wave there as well, even if he had his level 2 straight away. The Splinter Blast would have had a, wouldn't have had an effect. And in fact, Wyvern just holding on to that point. They don't have any healing support to help Envy in the mid lane, so he has to sustain himself. So it's going to be between a Ring of Health and a Bottle, and both of them are a little bit away right now. He's sending out another Salve on the Courier. Needing uh, to invest so many resources into just staying in the lane. Puppy, no tell, looking to commit. Puppy just runs down, breaks through the tree line. PL does put an early point up in that Phantom Rush so he can chase after the Shaman, who's now going to go for the Shackles. We are jumping forward. No tell with no doppelganger available. It means there is kill opportunities here for Team Secret, especially with that Shadow Strike. No tell, he's dead here. He should tick out that with the last attack. Fly actually, no, going to Shadow Grave. Keep No tell alive. He's still ticking down. He has six tick shotters and a heal. Ah, he's yeah, gonna he's going right. to live. He's going to live. Back behind the T1 tower and surviving. Well, actually, Pylai died. Down, raiding in jungle. He thought he was safe on the other side of the tree line, but that observer was still down from OG, helping Miracle to ensure the kill. And he can't really burn enough mana off here. Even with the two points up in that mana break, Miracle actually very, very low. The crit slowing down Eternal Envy. There's no more chase to come. Oh, they could toss him. Where is it? They lose vision. If they could walk up. They were looking to toss Envy on so he could get one more hit, and tossing a creep would not have been enough with this toss only being level one. And of course, the lane we haven't touched upon so much is the safe lane for the Dire, where, of course, we do have Moon Meander playing against Misery, both of them. Oh, Misery a little bit off level 5. He's going to get it in a second. There we go. It's been a pretty, pretty brutal lane on top. Misery will come in and crush, then Moon throws out the shards. They just keep trading their nukes against each other. Obviously, very difficult for, for both heroes to ensure a kill, especially when it comes to the Slaughter, because they've always got those snowballs that can stall you up. There are the Tranquils, so he's going to regen up here, and maybe this is an, a potential kill on the top lane, not too far from here for a secret, if they will get this level 6 on Misery soon, but at the same time, you could say for OG, Moon Meander winning the lane right now, being level 6 earlier, has a 10 CS advantage on the Slardar. They're already getting a rotate with him. Yep. PL's got enough mana through those stick charges that... He can throw a Lance only. Yeah. That's enough, though. With a snowball in from Moon, with a shard damage... He doesn't damage. have mana for his entire combo on the Tusk, though. No mango on him anymore. But he can at least still do the snowball and shards with, a, with the Phantom Lance combined. That Actually, up against a slider with Tranquils and full life, or almost full life, it would be a tall order. Weeha's also now rotating. Does it underneath the Dire Observer Ward, so Miracle now knows that they're switching up the mid lane. This will give space now for Eternal Envy to farm on the bottom lane. I'm just saying the PL is, has disappeared, so there's a little bit less pressure on the Anti-Mage of Envy. And there's a, there's a lot of kill potential in this mid lane for both teams, I think. With the Tusk off the map, you've got to be careful oh. with Queen of Pain that They're you don't coming. get caught. Misery sprinting from behind. He actually just bypasses the wipe and can't get the crush. The Cold Snap stops it. Now the crush will connect. Weeha still has a Sonic Wave. But Invoker, Cold Embrace by Crypt for the moment. Misery still bailing out here. The Slim Blast will not fly up to the Slaughter. But they do get the TP rotation out from Fly. You and start to see the damage of a high maneuverability Slaughter. They might have actually been able to kill that Slaughter if they didn't Cold Embrace. Miracle still had his Tornado and I think EMP available for a turnaround, but they play it safe with Crit. Worried about the uh, potential physical damage that could fly out there, and of course the Sonic Wave. That might have been the right choice in that situation. Okay, so if you're OG right now, you understand the laning phase, it's been fairly even, there's little between these two teams at the moment. Do you try and shut down Envy? We've seen what he has done for Team Secret time and time again. Is this when you move Vataska off? Do you rotate down, do you try and kill him off? Or are you more concerned about what's coming out from this Queen of Pain and Slaughter? I think if you're just looking at the state of this game right now and how it's going to develop over the next 15 minutes, Trading No Tails farm for Envies, I don't think is the way to go for OG. The, the Phantom Lancer, if you go back a couple of months, Phantom Lancer was a very popular pick. The two main counter picks were, as a matter of fact, Ember Spirit and Anti Mage, because they get the cleave and they kill off the illusions very fast. They're heroes that can keep up or surpass him in farm, especially the AM. 
So OG, I would be looking to put some pressure on Envy if they can, but the problem is their lineup actually isn't very good at killing the AM. It was the last pick from Secret, and I think they made the perfect choice for this particular game with that AM. Note the Pylite die taking an Observe Ward in, already plants one over on the Roche Pit. So they're keeping tabs on OG where their movements are. At the same time, Secret also pinged out that dire Observe Ward, which foiled the attack of Secret, because Misery was trying to just like run himself behind Miracle once again. Try what they did previously. But with that vision, it's too easy for Fly just to sit behind Miracle and make sure this Invoker stays alive. Also note too that Miracle is going for more of a combat build with these phase brutes as well as a bit like an urn for the Invoker. Does this mean you almost bypass the Hand of Mice look oh, for kills? Good pressure on uh, Highlight Eye. He missed the NATO though, and it's still enough. Yeah, it is. However, support rotating in. That shock, Miracle and Fly, that is split up Misery. Gonna miss the crush, but Eternal Envy will arrive. Miracle, the Shallow Grave's there from Fly. They're holding on that Mana Void for now. With the Shards actually locking him in. Keeping him in place, Misery will control Noom the end for the first time. Now as Weeha throws out the Sonic Wave, he'll end up dying. But Envy with a Mana Void spill. Catches another kill, a double for him, chasing after Fly as well. He's blinked off cooldown in two seconds now, one second time. Now off cooldown, can he get in front of Fly? Probably wants to attack once, then blink forward to ensure the death flow. And a triple kill for Eternal Envy, four to his name. After having that very early death. That's okay, gotta be blood. so concerning for OG. They take a bad exchange and three kills going on Envy is going to secure him treads and the Perseverance already minute nine. So he's now on top of the net worth chart. The, the exchange here, so Miracle now with this urn that you mentioned will of course have way better solo kill potential, can combo it with his cold snap to trigger that and prevent a hero like Eternal Envy from blinking pretty well. He needs to make use of it. There's a lot of pressure in my opinion on, on Miracle in this game to perform because they can't really utilize the PL against the rate lineup very well. Bottom lane, they're running in the snowball. Misery can turn for a double crush. There goes Shatasso. Misery dying so quickly when Fly arrives with that burst heal. And now Weeha's in trouble. Two seconds for Blink and two seconds is too long. The Winter Wyvern will find the killers. OG turn it on secret underneath their own tier one tower. Well, in the mid lane, Miracle still pressuring Pi and Secret's choice now to give the tiny levels, I think, is the way to go. You want multiple ways of dealing with the PL illusions and, of course, the really good magic damage against the Cold Embrace. If there's one thing OG's lineup is really good at dealing with right now, it's physical damage. They obviously counterpick the Slardar by getting both Cold Embrace and Weave and Shallow Grave mid lane. Yeah, there's your attack, Puppy. He went instantly for the Hex. Miracle's still gonna hit that Tornado. Not sure if Puppy will end up surviving with that Urn ticking him down. He'll give a Revenge Urn and Puppy. He doesn't survive. The Invoke will reach him. Miracle so far forward, but the Shallow Grave allows him to TP out to safety. <laughs> was very, very close there, but Puppy's haste does get purged by the tornado. And that allows Miracle to get that last attack, and the urn was actually not enough. Puppy was salving through it. Oh, top lane, top. Misery's in trouble. Yeah, with that snowball in, the shards won't lock him in position, however, and Misery again. A reactive crush a little bit too late. So I don't just know if you do it faster. <laughs> he, he's worried. Like, Misery died when he was only about 800 gold away from completing his blink dagger. That was the death on the bottom lane, and now he's continuously dying, and this blink keeps getting delayed. It is a key item, but I've just got my eyes on this safe lane of secret. The fact that Envy has four kills and it's not being countered very much, we're looking at a 15-minute battle fury if this continues. And in contrast to the game we saw between OG and Evil Geniuses, where they had the Alchemist to kill him off, who is killing the AM this game? I have a very hard time seeing OG pull it off. If Envy gets one or two core items after the Battle Fury, they, there's, the PL needs to get really big, and it's not really happening just yet for No-Tail. I'm saying that he has 54 CS and two kills, but you look at the net worth chart and... He's 3.6k to the 5k of Envy. He's 1,500 gold behind right now. That's really worrying. You, you need to be on par right now with PL to have a fighting chance in that matchup. Looks well, like Miracle's now going to make his rotation down the bottom lane. But he's doing it right underneath the Radiant Observer was. so Secret Seed is coming. And they just back up, in fact they just go for up for top. Moon already crushed up, Hard Eye keeps him tossed in the air. With a Scream, it's not enough damage with the sick charges, but they had enough of a follow-up. Misery again, he takes so much damage to ensure these kills. Radiant's middle tower is under attack. Doesn't really care too much as, he's, as long as he survives. Of course, Slarar, with that only 5 second downtime on sprint, can very easily just move around the map. Doesn't lose nearly as much time as other heroes on having to go back to base. 
He's already almost up to full health again, can TP out on a lane and maybe look for a kill. And see this movement from OG, they are identifying that this, this Envy is a problem. They're oh. going to go on him bottom. They commit curse, they go with the EMP as well. He's still got enough mana for a blink, he can get to the trees. If he can only blink, there he goes! Back behind the trees, oh. the tornado and the herbal timeout! Miracle will end up dying! Envy so low again! And Misery wants to punish! He's moving forward towards Crypt, the amplification's up! Nortel gonna try and create a buffer between him, Self, as well as the Wyvern and Team Secret Snowball chasing up the Slaughter once again. He should be able to get this craft shot. Oh no! Yeah, he does, but he's already down to fly. OG, they do get one kill for the Invoker, but they don't get the big one. They don't get Envy. That tornado was so close. From Miracle, but... Envy blinked all the way into the corner, and he's basically blind guessing there. Now at the same time, Puppy realizes, okay, you guys have just TP'd down two or three heroes to help in the bottom lane. He's almost going to take this tier one tower top. Crit doing what he can here. He they can't can do this for long, damage. though. If Puppy comes in and just ether shocks him, Crit loses almost all of his life. And Puppy's and Puppy... tanking the tower, so he can get some damage out. And he feels pretty safe doing this. He knows he has Envy on backup. He knows all those TPs came to the bottom lane. And it now he might actually like just see Envy going in. Crit came forward. Feeling like he might have had an opportunity. There's not enough mana burn for Envy to get the kill with the mana void, even if it is level 2. As Crit falls down, he breaks the tree line, and Envy moves forward. He can blink forward, two attacks, what else have we got? We've got the... well, okay. Crit, there's your mana void. 38 life. Back to the tower. Cold embrace himself up, keeps himself protected for now. And Envy will be forced to retreat. There's OG, they're preparing also on bottom lane. Miracle's coming in behind, he gets the tornado down towards Pylai Dai with the EMP. Miracle right behind it as Pylai Dai, can he reach the tower in time with the avalanche? That time is being created, but he's ticking down from the urn. Can't get one more attack in from Miracle to ensure that kill. And it's down now to Weeha, battling against Moomiander. The Dazzle Wee will give them the vision back behind the tower, scouting out Misery and Weeha as well as stripping their armor away. Weeha down for the count, Misery sprints himself away, he can't afford to die, he's just over 2k gold, he needs to keep this blink dagger money, but unfortunately he can't spend any of it, Miracle with the cold stamp, the tornado's still available, the shards won't lock Misery in, but the cold stamp, he'll die from the tornado fall! As OG find another kill, and yet again delay this initiation of the slaughter. But meanwhile, on the ranch, Eternal Envy, farming up, and uh, almost completed a battle fury. Right, he needs this camp plus one more, so the 15 minutes, pretty much spot on here, very good timing for him of course in this game, but... OG got about as much out of that as they could. Really good rotation of their heroes. Great weave cast there from Fly, giving them the vision and information they needed. Being able to dive behind the tower and find those kills. And Weeha in this game, he needs levels on Blink. It's really the cooldown that's getting, getting him killed right now. He's died three times and he always gets the first Blink off. And then they just run him down with all of this good catch they have with the Snowball, the Invoker Tornado. Of course, Long Range Wyvern and even the PL with the Phantom Rush. It's very easy for them to catch up as long as they have the vision. Something secret I've got to be a little bit worried about. Oh, but I still make... think they have some leeway, right? It's like... OG are doing everything they need to do, and I'm still sitting with this feeling this is just a classic AM game. So they need to keep this pressure up, find more of these kills, to be able to deal with him later on. Yes, need the items that allow them to do this. This PL, hiding in the tree line for now. I like how secret are also... And they're noticing where OG want to attack next, so if you want to keep the pressure up, where are you going to do it? More than likely, you want to attack that tier 2 tower in the bottom lane and try and take over the Animage's jungle. But then Secret just plan a very defensive observer while they watch Twilight Dotel die. and... Uh, Good oh. dodge. Double bounty rune for Miracle. Uh, AM blinking forward. Miracle has to go for the Yules. You have another blink on Envy. Not while he's getting cold snapped up. All the mana is lost. The pilot eye is still going to be here. You've got the Hex meantime a little bit further down the river where Fly dies the mass seven walls. The Shallow Grave will keep him alive. A miracle with a sonic wave. Envy actually ending his, actually having his three ended by the Invoker. So something good coming out here from OG. But pilot eye die. He might be lost as well. It's a two for one trade off. Fly still fighting. And now OG even get to farm up the mass seven walls just sitting in the river. Weeha's trying to get himself out of here. He'll walk past Nortel, Puppy with a shock and the scream combo. Nortel taking too much damage, a little too greedy to try and grab that farm. And now it's Puppy, who gets almost 705 gold, but he also gets sharded up. The snowball coming forward, Puppy, where's your mana? He's got two one charges, that won't be enough. Maybe a denial to the Ancients, but a needle attacking to bring him over. Now they start fighting, and he is denied up to the Ancients. Weeha, he's got no support, but he's still jumping forward, looking for the Kuri, and now the Shadow Strike onto the Tusker. Misery, he has the Blink Dagger up. Moon, he's got to be careful about jumping in, the Tornado is flying in, Misery blinks away. The Tornado catching out Weeha, he'll drop to the ground, and dying very quickly after.
And if there's one thing that's just been almost all top oh. by Crush, Misery keeps him controlled, looking for another stun. Well, the Shallow Grave will be there, but TP scroll decides not to use it. He might get bashed anyway, and Misery just needs to keep up a little bit longer. Blink Dagger off cooldown in one second time. He's not going for it. Fly's just retreating. They'll deny the top tier one tower. That's what Fly was working for. That's a lot of what... respect being shown here from Misery. Scared of the rotation. Surprising, too, because when you get that Blink Dagger, you'd expect the Slaughter to get even more aggressive. Maybe he's worried about the other lanes, like, for example, Miracle, who's now going to Yule's knee MP this Slaughter, and Misery. Well, he just can't blink in time, that Yule's set to doing damage, so... That's pretty annoying. It is. You're just standing there, you're in the tornado, and you just know, okay, the moment I drop down, the only thing I can do is run. There's no other way. And he's got to go all the way back to base. At I'm, least curious, I'm curious if we're going to see a, a stick on Envy. I think he's missing a magic stick this game simply because his entire mana pool gets burnt. Last time we saw Pilate like, giving him the arcane boots and actually giving Envy the choice of blinking out or in, and he chose to commit for a kill on Miracle that they did get, but he died first. If Pilate isn't around and he gets hit by MP, his entire mana pool is gone. Unless if he's sitting on these int treads and completely full mana. Could he then just go into something more like a BKB? That means it's going to be wall response and curse will be the only things that would control him. He BKB is BKB off. a very good item on Antimage in this game, I think. I I would say... Or fly, go walks in, Manta the smoke's going to break, and Weeha, well, there's a cross from Misery, Mass Life Mortar down with the Snowball, Dragging fly up with the Sonic Wave, it's so hard on OG, but they got so much life, Puppy dropping down low, it's two heroes lost, probably going to be a third, Misery so low and fly, the Cold Embrace gets him up, Weeha will die from the fall! It's a double kill for Veritale, it's four kills for OG, and a nine kill lead, 19 minutes in. The only person that doesn't die is Eternal Envy because he's just absent. And that's... It's been really fascinating for me how during the entire main event of this tournament, apart from that, there's been like one or two games, mainly the last game EG played in the tournament, where teams are kind of avoiding fights. They almost constantly are going at each other. Right now we have a 31 kill game at 19 minutes in, and I don't know if this is the strategy Secret should be playing right now. I think play the slower game, get the vision out, just keep track of OG, dodge fights, secure Envy farm. You could argue that they have to take fights constantly so that Envy feels safe, but at the same time, they just ran in four into a very bad team fight that OG won. And then obviously EVE getting farm is great, but the next four heroes on the net worth chart are all OG. Almost all five, actually. Dazzle has almost got higher net worth than the Queen of Pain. But you can understand the concept behind it. Like, it was meant to be a smoke into the Dire Jungle, you get one quick pick, and then you move out. You saw the target of the Dazzle, and then the idea is, we kill him, we get out. That's it. You don't need anything more, maybe they'll leave me enough where you could just attack the tier one tower from range and OG he won't initiate into you, but it's the timing that comes out from Moon. His ability to be there for the snowball and then forcing Secret to even split up their own fight. They're not dictating the terms of where the fight happens. And Weeha is also in a world of hurt. He doesn't have a, he doesn't have a TP scroll. It's on cooldown for 27 seconds. Miracle's gonna walk over. They go for the call snap. Blink in one second time. And Weeha, Tornado again, gonna send him up and he can't get away. The Invoker will find the kill and OG extend their lead further. They still have Eternal Envy creep skipping the top lane. And Notal will TP back to deal with this, but while he does so, Puppy and Misery, they're waiting for the opportunity. That's a fake PL on the front lines, and they will not fall for it. They're gonna play it safe. Some really good warding right now from OG. You can very clearly tell that they try to play more of an aggressive game, whereas Secret, all of their wards are inside their own jungle, apart from that one they have near the top rune. OG with a deeper ward around the enemy top tier 2, they have a deep ward inside the enemy jungle. And also one in the top lane. Oh, no tail putting pressure on Puppy. He suddenly got this Diffusal Blade. And yes. Forcing out a TP. Slowing down Envy. He'll blink away. The Snowball chasing TP. It doesn't have time. Moon will reach him and Eternal Envy. He can blink again. Down to 55 life. He'll buy his mana style recipe, but he's got no, one more blink up his sleeve. But he does not have a TP scroll. He'll have to make him chase with the Sigil and the Shards. Envy avoids the Shard damage. Now the Sigil gets vision. He blinks away, but they know exactly where. The Sigil just keeps chasing. Now the Snowball can work from Moon. Envy blinks again. Over, down to 28, no just coming in, the shards will finally catch out the anti-mage. No buyback available, but at least makes OG work for it. And secret, they're, they're really running out of steam. This was the one hero they could kind of hold on to in Eternal Envy who got four kills early. Since then, he's got one assist and two deaths. His farm is still alright, but with the rest of his team dying as much as they have, there's so much weight on his shoulders, and there is no alternative for Secret than to play this game on the back of Envy. 
with how much they've lost. Eric Paul. He's found it. Sentry was down. There's nowhere to hide. Misery is thinking about a jump over the EMP though. He needs to wait till it's over. This miracle tossed up. Pilot die. They cut their losses. They let him go. While Moon goes with the shards over on Puppy. Won't lock him in. But he'll be able to back up. Puppy should be very happy to get locked in there. No, this is definitely a bonus kill for OG. Should it have landed? What do you think about this build coming up on the Queen of Pain? We got Weeha going into an Orchid. Normally that's not item we see when you look for momentum, which they're losing time and time again. Misery, this is going to be an easy kill on this top. Maybe a little bit harder when those Mass Open Wars go down. And Moon, well, he just snowballs through it. Mass Open Wars, very defensive. Crit, they've got control over on him for now. While the Shackles, ah, it's not going to do enough. Crit will end up dying. Tornado keeping Team Secret away from responding to the to the three-man gang squad that came behind the Tier 2 tower. Weeha still wants to go for more, but they've lost their anime. The Snowball protection. Grabs the Invoker up to Weeha. They got another punch, not available. Weeha blinked himself away to safety. Further away from Pylite dying, away from the safety of the wards. But the EMP will burn Pylite down. He gets one last toss down, but he'll die over on the side tree line. Weeha, the sole survivor again. Team Secret always left with one man to tell the tale of how OG killed them. And Envy just lost so much armor from the weave over time. The Walrus Punch dealt like 400 damage to him there from Umiando <laughs> toward the end. He was not ready for that. Now we are getting orchided out. He blinked down. He wanted to grab he's that Gloria. Now he's blinked. Not only is it on cooldown, but he's orchided by the Invoker. The Tier 2 tower will drop as well. And OG, their lead extends over 12,000 net worth, almost 14,000 experience. And there are very few bumps in the road. Team Secret have managed to plateau it a couple of times, but that's lasted a very short period of time. And now, OG, is investment time. Aegis the Immortal to come their way. They have just taken so many good fights, especially very impressed by the Invoker and the Tusk from Miracle and Moon Meander, respectively. Just set up so many fights. I think Snowball might have been the spell of the tournament, honestly. If you look over the course of the entire of this event, just so many incredible snowballs that just salvage the fight. It turns the fight from a loss into a big win. I think there's two team fights here where OG, instead of losing two heroes, just kill four with the use of one spell perfectly. You just gotta respect this tusk from OG, regardless of whether it's crit or moon playing it. Especially when Secret, like, they made the choice to give Moon this farm. When they run a one-on-one -on -one lane on the top, you understand this Tusker can only find levels, but he'll find his initiating items. Now he's actually got his utility arriving too, having the full Greaves available for the Tusker, plus a Blink Dagger, and we're 25 minutes in. But what is, still farm-wise, the third position for OG. They gotta protect Envy. I know, I've said it a lot of times, but... They're using him as bait. You can't really do anything else. It's... I want to say to a large extent that Secret have kind of dug themselves into a hole. I really love that last pig AM, but they have been fighting way too much. Really oh, allowing OG Crit. to play their game. He sees Puppy moving. He came up, Puppy's just like, I, I don't know, I think I felt a cold, stiff breeze on the back of my neck. And Crit hiding him in the tree line. He's still got his Blink Dagger available, and Puppy, he's not sure about this, but Crit, he's basically made himself a pen. <laughs> There's no way Puppy sees inside of this. And the chance of Misery blinking in there is almost nothing. Those wings don't even extend out. Have we mentioned that Crit is level 15 on a Wyvern? <laughs> we have not. Have That's we mentioned how awesome absurd. Crit is? The supports on the side of OG are level 13 and 15. They're the same level or higher than the Queen of Pain. Damage. Dazzle has actually also got more experience than her, so both of them. Such a big XP lead, and it's just the involvement of everyone on Team OG. They've got so many assists on every single hero, apart from No Tail, just because these heroes have been bunching up and taking incredibly good fights. Now the Mantis style finally comes out from Envy. With a 15-minute Battle Fury, he's not satisfied with taking 11 minutes to farm up a Manta without a Vlad's along the way. You've got one as well for No Tail. Fly was just carrying the recipe for a while. But especially what Envy pinged out previously, he, he pinged the Dazzle with that item on him. They're neck and neck on farm right now. The AM and the PL have the exact same net worth. You go back 10 minutes, Envy was ahead by 2,500 oh, and a battle middle lane. They're going on Puppy. That avalanche buys a little bit of space, but Puppy will still die to the Orc, and there's nothing that can save him from this. So another kill coming the way of the Miracle Invoker. And he's getting even more, and Puppy, well, at least he spent his money before death, almost finishing this Yule Scepter of his. I think the next step for OG is to get a gem and just counter all the wards. I'm a little bit surprised they haven't bought one yet, considering how far ahead they are. Fly will have the money for it in a moment. Actually, do, do they have a gem? They just 
Could they just counter two wards or did those wards expire? It looks like... There's, there's no, no there's gem. No there's no gem on OG. They just expire, so... Actually, yep. they do have one. It's sitting back in the fountain at the moment. All right, so they do... Yeah, they have one. Yeah, okay. so they got rid of it. Bottom lane, the attackers coming from OG into the tier three towers. They move forward, see Pylai die. Meanwhile, up on the top lane, Envy will finish off that tier two tower. So it ends up being a trade. In fact, a secret gonna dodge this completely and go for a trade off. It may be a bit of a race. As now Puppy, the Mass Serpent will drop. The Snowball will ensure the kill on the Shadow Shaman as they mop up the Mass Serpent for the tier three tower. Secret are working up. The TPs will come back. The curse on Weeha. It doesn't catch out Envy, however. Misery will go for the crush. He doesn't have space to get back out of here as OG not get a double kill into the Invoker, they protect their tier 3 tower, and they wipe the entire bottom rack. Secret, just don't push fast enough. Is Moon coming back in? He's coming back in. He's looking at Pylai die. Pylai die feeling he's got all the space in the ball to farm oh, him with nice. a casual heal. That's just... Such a good read from OG Envy, that they can get that kill. He blinked forward. He's blinked into Moon as well as Fly. The Shadow Wave's there, but he'll blink up, but Moon's still with him. Walrus punches in two seconds time. Envy trying to find this one, but Moon losing his man. The Mana Boys are enough. He got the Greaves off in time, and Envy still doing some work. The Shackles keeping Fly out. There's no Shadow Grave available. Now it's back up as well as the heal from Fly, but Puffy, this may be the fight to end it. The Sunstrike even coming in looking for the pop. And well, it doesn't get close enough, but it doesn't matter. OG. They have taken control of the team secret base. No Tiny, no Shaman, Envy's not ready to fight. And they'll probably even lose the mid-racks at this rate. Yeah, this game is pretty much over right now. This is, they can't defend these barracks whatsoever. And they, I don't even think they can defend top if there are five heroes remaining. In the situation secret are in, five on fives are unwinnable. And they have no options to split push and force back OG right now with the current position. Oh well, they do have a tier 2 tower top. I guess that's their, their saving grace for now. At the same time, OG could just go for the GG push if they can get one pick on secret. But there's no reason to take that risk. You're in a grand final. You're staring down the barrel of being one game up in a best of five against team secret. 25,000 golden experience lead minute 29. One of the bigger leads of the tournament at this point in time. It's huge. Team Secret, it is going to be a, like, it's, it's a huge mountain to climb. I think this might be the first game of the tournament where every hero on a team is five digit net worth at minute 30. Fly is just above the 10k. So now pulling way ahead of the enemy mid laner. He's also picked up so many kills. He's making it more difficult as well for Secret to get a handle on this game, because it looks like he's also got that plate mail set. How do you even kill off the Dazzle? He's giving everyone armor. He's got, or he's got armor himself, but if this keep game keeps going, he may even just finish up the, the OG signature Lotus Orb. And the key play for OG, I think Lotus Orb plays really well into the way they play in general as a team. This game has been one big bait fest. They want Secret to go on them so they can turn around, use their defensive cooldowns very well, the cold embrace, the snowball, the shallow grave, all the heals. And Secret keep taking the bait and keep trying to fight them, looking at the map, and they're like, oh, we could get this kill. He's out alone. He's never alone. There's always backup there from OG. They move together very well as one unit. And they're coming as one unit through the top. The mid and the bottom will take care of itself. They got super creeps pushing in through those lanes. Chris even staring down the barrel of a refresher orb on this Wyvern. There's so much money on OG. And while we've seen Envy do a lot, look where Secret are. This is this is kind of telling you the tale of the game right now. They have got four heroes hiding inside their well. Pilot A is the only one forward. This almost baits like they're doing a smoke maneuver. The Invoker is inching his way forward. He sees Pylai die, and Team Secret, there goes your Hex Secret. They kind of, well, they're not even going to respond. They just let the Tiny die. They want Tiny to go out and find someone and toss him to the fountain and just lock him up and blow him up. Is but... that the only dream? Have we actually come back to the point where we're almost looking at fountain hooking? What? The old classic puppy way? Secret. What? They're letting it go. They've, they've got no choices. There's no time rating in a grand final secret. There is not. You... Maybe they're also buying time just to talk this out because right now things have just gotten completely out of control. OG again, the Megas, and OG, like, it's gifted. There's just nothing else coming. They're not calling the game. OG now have Mega Creeps as secret. The Tiny's up in six seconds. They can yeah. fight this five, but that's going to be it. In fact, they just call it before the Tiny is up. GG. OG will take game number one against Team Secret, who forfeited AFK inside their fountain. 
instead what a of start. instead of calling GG right away. Of course, the moment they call GG, they have they go out the booth. Break time starts. There, this is the same as taking a timeout basically and just getting a little extra time to talk through the game. Uh, they do call GG in the end though, instead of letting uh, OG end the game. So it seems like okay, they got the key points across that they wanted before their break. 